All right, beginning the day in Tifton, Georgia. Supercharging here, trying to fill all the way up. I'm going to pick up my trailer today. It's the beginning of this adventure. Well, the car is outfitted. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you know I've got this way safe hitch on the back. Two and five sixteenths inch ball. I'm getting a custom made trailer. It's a six by 12 foot enclosed trailer. And this thing should be just the right height. Actually, I've got it on high right now, but it's gonna be like between 15 and 18 inches off the ground, the ball, when I lower it down to towing mode in the normal setting. So it should hopefully be just right. And can't wait to get that trailer. We're gonna head over there right now to pick it up. All right, well on this trip, I'm gonna be a little bit concerned about my battery capacity. I did have 259, now I got 234. That's a subject for a little bit later in the video. Let me first of all show you where we are. We're at the Tifton, Georgia Supercharger, we're heading over to Douglas, Georgia. It's like 46 miles. Then we're gonna be heading down to Ocala, Florida, and I wanna stop here at Gainesville. I've never stopped at Gainesville before. It's a newer charger. That's like another 180 miles. That's like 250 miles. And then it's gonna be like 800 miles back up all the way to Reston outside of DC. So we're gonna document this entire trip. It's a thousand miles. The trailer will be empty when I pick it up at the trailer manufacturer. And then we're gonna pick up a big load in Ocala, Florida, which is my video wall. And here, let me show you what I'm concerned about. I've got a few areas of concern. Those are the large gaps between some of these superchargers, and we'll see as we go, but between, uh, what is this? Kingsland, Georgia, and Savannah, Georgia, there's like 100 miles. And between Savannah, Georgia, and Santee, another 100 mile gap. And then between Rocky Mount and Chester, We've got like another almost 100 miles. Those are the, anything else is doable, but that's really gonna be taxing. I don't know what kind of range I'm gonna be getting with this big trailer. It's gonna be, the worst thing's gonna be the aerodynamic loss of this basically carrying this giant brick on the back. And I'm concerned because if I, if I go half range, okay, and I used to have two, 259, it would've been like 130, 130 miles, but look, I'm only gonna get like 234. And you have no idea how long it took me to get up to this number. It took forever, like going at the end here. So I, it's gonna be cutting it real close on some of these. And I'm gonna have to wait forever to charge this thing up to the very top on some of these superchargers. So it's gonna be interesting. Oh man. All right, now let's talk range loss, people. You can see my car's got 109,000 miles on it. I'm just starting its towing career now at two and a half years and 109,000 miles on it. It's, I've got the 90D, so it came with 259 miles of range from the factory, but let's see where we are right now. I've been supercharging forever, and it keeps saying 10 minutes, it doesn't even move. I don't even know if I can get to 239, and that is taking forever to get these last couple miles in. I must have been sitting here for a half hour, and I picked up three or four miles, maybe. I am not kidding when I say that. So I am guesstimating that my range loss here is going to be... I'm thinking the maximum I could ever get if I waited for another hour or more would be like 239. And that's totally impractical to do that. You know that, totally impractical. But if we go from the rated 259 from the factory to 239, that means I've got like a 7.7% .7 range loss, I'd say, something like that. So maybe let's say 8%. I don't even know if we can get to 239. It might even be more. It may be more like 8 to 10%, really truly realistically but you got to remember i've also done almost all my charging on superchargers i've supercharged like 11 1200 times something like that i gotta check the app to get the exact number but we'll figure between eight to ten percent uh range loss and i hope it doesn't get any worse that's the thing and especially with towing oh boy let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen to my range when i'm towing long distance towing what's going to happen with the battery life uh range loss all that love to hear from you in the comments and type in the number if you own a tesla what is your range loss? Type that in the comments, just a number, percentage number. You don't have to put the percentage. Just put like five, 10, 20. I don't think anybody's that high, right? Four, whatever it is. And I'd love to see what, uh, what yours is.
There is just nothing out in this part of Georgia. You can see before picking up the trailer, I'm, make, I'm putting on some good speed here, but I'm only using about 300 watt hours per mile. That's what I'm using. Wait till you see what it's like when I get that trailer on there. Oh my gosh. All right, here it is. Look at all these trailers. This is the place. Okay, as you can see, I got 190 miles left. So now that we're here, what's what's half of that? Uh, 95 miles, 95 miles at the most. I'm just barely gonna make it to Live Oak if I get half the range. I might have to go back over here to Tifton, where I was. Maybe I can go to Live Oak. That's eight, 80 miles. That means I'll have like 15 miles. I don't even know what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna get in terms of range. Oh man, I'm not sure what to do. Lake City. I'm never gonna make it to Gainesville. That's 130 miles. Got to figure this out. Well, I think here's my answer. It's 85 miles to Live Oak, and I've got 190 miles of range. That means I've got almost no buffer at all that's let's say it's ends up being 90 90 180 i got 10 miles of buffer it's assuming i get i think i have to go back i have to go back to tifton dang it's gonna make my day even longer yeah if i was filled up all the way that'd be one thing but i'm not so back to tifton 40 miles away look at all those axles and the main office to pick up is over there. That's how they bring them out. And the whole yard is full of trailers. Okay, I just uh, get in the paperwork and they're gonna pull the trailer around like that guy did with, with the uh, tractor from earlier. That's it. I gotta check it for any issues here. This is good. Looks like the chains are long enough. I was, I was a little bit concerned about that. Should be okay. Huh? Where's the trap? Yeah. Uh, if you don't need to pay a 
Keys and yeah, we got all these D rings in here for securing cargo with tie downs. And there's no wheel well intrusion, which is cool. It's just a complete box. You can see D rings here and here. And this one doesn't have anything in the roof here. No ceiling vent lights or whatever. Uh, it's got the flow through from there down to there on, on, on the side. And then it's got an LED or some kind of light here for inside. It's never going to be this clean again. I can tell you that. All right, everything looks good. Ready to pay and take delivery. So it should be, my car's gonna be actually a little bit wider than the trailer, which is nice. I don't have to worry about towing mirrors or anything. And the wide axles in the back will make it much more stable. Double axles too towing down the highway. Okay, it's all hooked up and ready to go. It's only like registering like 100 pounds maybe on the tongue weight, which is great, but I have no cargo inside, so. And I gotta get this pin. Actually, it's one thing that didn't, didn't come with it. Alright, so the pin goes right in here to lock this thing down. Alright, all set. Ready connected. Yeah, lights are on. You can see them up there because I got my headlights on. Temporary plate, all the LED lights are working. I'm seeing flash off because I walked away from the car. All right, back to Tifton. Then we'll be on the way once we charge up there. My door's open. I don't want to forget about that. As you can see, the blue trailer mode light is on, so we're set to go. All right, let's try this again.
All right, we're off. Look at my graph. You can see what it used to be without the trailer on the left, and now it's like a giant mountain. It looks like it's at least double the usage, maybe more. Oh my gosh. Alright, I've lowered my usage by slowing down. The top speed really makes a difference here. You can see I was over 750. It's dropping down now. I gotta try to keep this at double the usage, and I don't know what speed that means. And if I was getting 300 or 300 kilowatt hours per mile, I should. I gotta figure out what speed I can get about 600, and it may mean some slow driving. And I don't need to do that all the time, but like I was saying, when I drive between some of these superchargers that are, you know, 100 miles apart, it's gonna be critical there. It's gonna make all the difference in the world. And I either kill time by driving slower or I kill time by waiting at supercharger, but I may not even be able to make it on some of these. That's what I'm concerned about. It's here, it's dropping down. As I'm hitting 55 consistently, it's dropping down. I would hope I can get it down to 600. I gotta find out what speed it's gonna be 600 kilowatt hours per mile. It may have to be lower than 55. All right, we're almost there. Got 80 miles left. We just drove 46 miles. We started with 190. We've already burned 110, 110, not burning, but we've consumed 110 miles of range in 46 miles. I'm sorry, yeah, 110 miles of range in 46 miles. That's crazy, I gotta do the math on that. I'm back and it's kind of full. I don't know if I'm gonna have to unhook the trailer or not. Yeah, you can't really drive through. The, these guys can't drive by, so I'm going to have to unhook the trailer. That sucks. Alright, let's see if this will fit. I think it will. I don't have to unhook. But I do have to check the lug nuts on the trailers. It's a good time, the reason I'm stopping now, because every 50 miles you got to do that, so i got to do that right now. Actually, the first 50 miles. Alright, now here's where I found this. This is what has to be done. Gotta do that right now. Wow, I'll tell you, some of these are loose. It's a good thing I'm doing this. Okay, as you can see, I am 84.3 miles from where I need to go. Boy, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. Well, based on my usage up to this point, it's 2.39. I gotta multiply the number of miles by 2.39, which is supposed to be just about 200 miles of range needed. And so I got a while to go, and that'll get me just barely there. 200 miles. All right, and this place is, it turns out it's about as far away as the trailer place, but I still probably wouldn't have made it from the trailer place. I wouldn't have known. I gotta slow down though. What I really gotta do is, is drive slow and give myself some extra range. So maybe I'll pull out of here with 210 miles of range and drive slow. That's what I need to do. So that's the plan. All right, I'm gonna try this with 214 or whatever it is when I unplug it. And I want to mention one other thing. I noticed that the trailer was too low in the front, so I actually had to raise this up one level so that it's level from front to back. I think it'll be a lot better. Let's, let's try this out. So hopefully we can make it. Let's go. Okay, well, I'm finding if you keep it at 52 here, I'm settling in at under 600 watt hours per mile, which is nice, but remember this trailer is unloaded. So I'm thinking I could probably do 55 with it unloaded and stick in at like, you know, 600 watt hours per mile, which will meet my goal. So I can probably, I might just bump it up a little bit. All right, now going 55, you can see we're at 526 miles or watt hours per mile. So I can maybe bump it up to 60. I think the important thing is to leave the cruise control on. Now you can't use autopilot when you're towing, it won't let you and it's dangerous. But um, as long as you're using the cruise control and keeping it steady, it's when you really dig your foot into that accelerator pedal to keep up with traffic that it really eats up the electricity. So I'm gonna bump it up to 60. That's where we are with 55, we should be able to do 60. And this person just passed me, now I'm gonna catch up to him. They're like, what's this guy doing? We'll see what it says. 
All right, well, I've been locked in at 60 for some time. You can see we're at like 620, 625. So that's the, the tipping point there between 55 and 60. And my guess is when I have some weighted, I'm going to have to keep the 55. That's my guess. So it's going to be longer driving for sure, but it's, it's necessary. And if you look at the graph, if you hit the energy button, energy button is uh, on the menu down there, pop-up menu, there, energy, see? You hit that, it tells you how much mileage you're getting at the, project, at the current usage. And right now it's 76 miles remaining. And I've got 55 miles to go, it's a buffer of 20 miles. So I'm okay with that. Um, but when I do 100 miles, this was like 85 miles between chargers. When I do 100 miles, man, it's gonna be close. Whoa, it's gonna be close. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to stay slow in the speed, that's for sure, and fill all the way up. So it's, it's some slow driving, it's doable here, but this is a long, slow process. I'm not sure what's going on. All of a sudden, usage went way up. Wow, I don't know why it's slowing down like that either. Usage went way up, and now it says I'm not going to make it. This is not good. I'm not really sure what's going on. I did turn on autopilot for a little bit by turning off trailer mode, which is a, probably a mistake. I bet you that uses more electricity. But I'm also hitting more hills here now. Little hills up and down, as you can see. And that's affecting range. We're doing okay now on the mileage, uh, the range and all. I think it was this hill. I think it was just climbing a hill to get to Valdosta, Georgia. And now we're heading down. <laughs> Hills make a huge difference here. Huge. I mean, look, I'm well below 600 now. I didn't slow down the speed that much. And then I had to end up pumping it back up. But don't underestimate the effect on of hills at any speed above 60 miles an hour. Those two things are range destroyers. All right, we are approaching the Live Oak Supercharger, Live Oak, Florida. It is really hot here today, and it's a huge truck stop. I see a testimony up there, up there now, but there's 12 stop stations. I hope I don't have to disconnect with my trailer. It's a good one to stop out if you have a trailer like me today. This place is huge, Busy Bee. Oh my gosh, it's like a shopping mall here, wow. Alright, hopefully this reaches. Oh my gosh. Nope, it doesn't reach. I gotta pull up. Try this again. There we go. It's gonna work. Okay, now I gotta. I got this new trailer. I gotta check the lug nuts on it. If you like interstate travel plazas and that kind of thing, you'd love this. Not if you like clothing malls or anything, but it's just a tourist trap, it seems like, for people driving down the highway. Wow. And sure enough, these things do require tightening. They are still loose. Not as loose as before, but it is a really good thing. You really got to do this when you get a new trailer. I had, I guess, I don't know, set, set seating in or I don't know what, but they sure do get loose. All right, so here I am at the supercharger with all the Teslas shiny and clean. And then I'm over here with my giant trailer. A little bit out of place, huh? But at least there's room for me. I want to uh, disconnect the trailer. That is a bonus for sure. Here's another view of it. All right, heading to Gainesville now. I had an extra 20 or 30 miles starting off, and I just blew through it. Look at that average watt. 920 watts per mile. I've just been flying down the road. 
Um, I figured I had way more than enough electricity, but now that's not the case. And now I've got, it's backed off. It was right at the exact number. Now it's 55 miles of range with 53 miles to go. So I gotta keep it dialed back at the speed, like 62 miles an hour, I think that's a good speed for me. Should have enough with that. We're now approaching Gainesville. I have squeezed every last drop of electricity, <laughs> drop, electronic electricity out of here. Speeding up when I can, and I'm gonna end up with like 10 miles of range left, I think, when I arrive as a little bit of a buffer. All right, we are heading into the Gainesville Supercharger. I hope they have room for me without having to unhook the trailer. I am in a big time crunch. It's a big area and it's newer, so I don't think it's used very much, which is good. It says there's seven of 10 available. Hope so. Also, it looks like the projected range gives you a buffer, which is nice. See, it tells me 10 miles projected range, but we've actually got 25, or at least we're gonna have over 20. So it's probably gonna give you at least 10 miles of buffer there, which is awesome. I am going to need that going forward at 10 miles. Oh shit, stuff has changed. Damn it. Oh, it changed again. I'm gonna hurry, I gotta register my trailer. I gotta get out of here, pick up my equipment. Okay, it's gonna make a left. There's lots of traffic here, tons of traffic off this interstate. I don't know what, but there's shopping everywhere. There's stores everywhere, oh my gosh. You will not get your, and I'm even gonna stop at the DMV on a walk over there. Hopefully I can get a spot without having to unhook. Well, this one's at a Whole Foods, that would be nice, but I had to disconnect the trailer, fortunately. It's hot and sunny here in Florida, oh my gosh. All right, I gotta get all the stuff done now. This would be a great place to charge though. Just in general, great place to charge, I'd say. So much to do here. But the traffic is horrendous. Horrendous traffic. Unbelievably bad traffic here. Wow. All right, yeah, my license, my tag, trailer's still there. Should've locked it up. I still don't know how to use a lock yet, but time to get out of here. Pick up the equipment that I came here to get. Oh, it's so hot when open. And now it's windy, it won't close. This is a great thing to have when backing up to connect the trailer. All right, I'm here in Ocala to pick up the equipment. The video wall. It's actually a, a direct view LED system. All right, we're here for pickup. All right, here's all the stuff. It's got panels, panel boxes, and then this is the stuff to hang it with. Yeah. So it's like, these are the crank stands? Yeah. yeah. Two of them and then four cases and then all the other yeah, associated this, parts. Yeah, two cases. This is two of your, your trucks. It's got wheels on it. Oh, yeah. And like you say, it, it's not going to be in the box long. It's going to whenever you take it, you got to take it out to set it up. Train tracks? Yeah. Oh, over that way. Okay. Yeah, all the way over there. Okay. I should get this. All right, so we got that. Next one goes on top. All right. So everything's in there for now. Okay, I got it all loaded up now. And. Put down some tie downs in here for the big boxes, the cases, so they won't go anywhere. And I think we're just about ready to head out. I'll be able to put much more stuff in here in the future when I organize it better. And, and um, I don't really have any 
way to stack this up now because it'll all kind of fall in place and collapse on each other because there's not enough stuff in the trailer right now. But in the future it will. And the tongue weight you can see is like 350, 400 pounds. So it should tow better also with some weight on it finally. Up till now we haven't had any weight at all in there. Nice sunset. Okay, I'm definitely feeling the weight back there now when I'm towing and I'm really kind of wondering what kind of effect this is gonna have on the range. But, you know, I gotta keep the speeds down, I already know that, so I will soon find out. I figure I'm probably towing about almost 4,000 pounds now. Okay, I'm doing a final check. Higher pressures, this one's, that one's low. The other ones were good. Got locks on there. These tires are good. I'm gonna, I'm, I got a charge here in Ocala and I have to go over there and there's not any room in the part of the trailer, it's part of a restaurant. Got a lock on here. So we're set, I'm gonna get something to eat as soon as I finish with these tires. Man, both of these were really low. They were about 10 pounds lower than on the other side. It could have had a severe effect on the way that thing was towing. You gotta always check these things. I'm checking the uh, lug nut tightness again. All right, we're trying out the crazy cucumber. They got some vegan options here. I hear that anyway. Alright, now I'm driving the long stretch, you gotta stay awake, from Ocala all the way to St. Augustine, St. Augustine. It's, I was going to do a further one, but this was like 92 miles and I'm trying to test out what I can do with energy savings. I gotta try to keep this 600 watt hours per mile or less and it looks like I cannot go over 45 miles an hour in order to do that. I say that's a general rule of thumb, you cannot go over 45 miles an hour if you've got 100 miles in between superchargers like I do. Okay, it's the middle of the night. I gotta turn this thing around because the shopping center is closed. It says, I don't know if I can get to here to charge or not. I'm supposed to charge in this St. August, St. Augustine outlet center, but it says it's closed. All right, I was able to get in. I had to find a roundabout way to get in here, but I, I got in. Thankfully. I think I need to take a nap while this thing's charging. Well, there's my answer of my uh, complete charge. And I did this by accident, I fell asleep. So, that's no good. I might have some. Oops. Some idle fees now, unfortunately. Alright, well, you can see it says here up to a dollar a minute idle fees. I just called Tesla actually and talked to them, roadside assistance, the only ones that are there, and they told me they don't see anything on the account, so that I, likely I didn't get, there's no cost for that, although I was probably plugged in for like an hour or more, I don't even know. Uh, I'm sure it was quite a while. And um, anyway, I need to monitor that and then call them back if I need to, but hopefully there was no cost because there was nobody else there plugged in. And even they said that usually it doesn't, It'll give me notifications or may not take effect if there's nobody else there. But just doing the math, if I was there for two hours, that's $120. Wow. I need some rest. 
So we're all gonna get some sleep. And in order to sleep in the car, you gotta lock the car. I need more foil for my key. If you're not sure why that is, you might wanna look at some of my videos on my channel. But you have to wrap it up completely and totally solid so that it's encased and no transmitting is getting out so that you can actually lock your car from your app and it won't uh, keep it unlocked because if it has any signal coming out of the key, it knows it's in here and will never allow you to lock the car or lock the key in the car. Good night. All right, it's morning. Time to get some supplies. I think it's gonna be a long day. I need some food and everything. I tell you, this energy consumption graph has been my new best friend, especially on the last set to the last five miles, which you see in the lower left, that button. It defaults to 15, but five really gives you a picture of exactly what you're doing. When I compare that number with how many miles I have left to where I'm going, it's amazing. I gotta use it all the time now. I'll tell you a little secret. Look at that braking, the regenerative braking I get. I still have not put on the brake controller, and I don't know if I'm going to because there's so much regenerative braking and if I use the brake controller, I will miss out on almost all the regenerative braking, so I'm not really sure what to do, still thinking about it. Oh, and if you guys are wondering where I sleep, here it is. It's nice and comfy. I got lots of videos on setting up mattresses in the back of your Tesla Model X with the fold down rear seats here. You can't have the, the captain's chairs, whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. Hey, you may have been hearing about the icebreakers recently. It's a term I didn't even know what it was, but I always knew the part. It's right here inside the driver's door or passenger door on the Tesla Model X. It actually pops out. I think it pops out all the time to open the door, but you almost never notice it unless it's slow to retract or unless it discovers ice and has to force itself out and stay for longer and then it retracts slowly. This is what about uh, the video I did where a girl had broken her tip of her finger off. And what happens is it goes out and sometimes it doesn't go in for a while and then someone can get their finger here and while it retracts and it'll pull the finger in and they had to actually cut the person's finger out but unfortunately they didn't know that if you pull twice on the handle here all the way out I'm not gonna do it now because it'll shut the door it will release this in addition to trying to shut the door but it won't shut the door if someone's fingers there but that's how it works and let's just see if you can see it in the video I don't you have to really do this in slow motion to see if it's there see the movement but whoop, and it's scenting me there, but there, it's right at this level. You see it right here? Let's see if I can, it's scenting me there. It's not opening all the way. Anyway, that's it. draining the water from my Orca cooler. Better than Yeti, do your research. Ice lasts longer and this stuff. They just don't have the reputation name. It's all just marketing for, they haven't put ice in it for days. And it's been in the hot car. They don't have the, um, like I said, the um, marketing of Yeti, that's all. It's all a marketing machine. Just a pro tip, you always wanna break your ice up. Not, don't put the whole bag in, especially if it's frozen. I mean, put the whole bag in, but that's what you have to do. You have to just drop it a few times and then it's ready to go. Now that we've been traveling, traveling for a while, see how things are holding up inside here? First time I've looked after. Ooh. Oh my gosh. This came down. But yeah, this, that's just barely hanging on to that corner over there. I'm gonna need to figure out something else with this one, I think. So I've got, yeah, I've got a connector up there. Maybe it needs to go down, across there and down and around. I'm gonna reconfigure this. Jacksonville, Florida. I've also been noticing the phantom braking here with the shadows and the morning light. 
and I can't use regular autopilot. It won't let me. It's completely locked out, which is wise. It must know that I'm pulling a heavy load in addition to the wiring being connected because in the past, I never really pulled heavy loads, but now we have one. And so I can only use the traffic aware cruise control. None of the other functions of autopilot work, but we are definitely been getting some phantom braking. And I actually, I wonder if there'll be any phantom braking over here. There's a big shadow underneath this bridge, see it? Because of the morning light. Let's see, we're gonna pass underneath of it. Right now. No phantom braking, all right, that's good. Well, I'll let you enjoy some of the views of downtown Jacksonville while we are passing by. And as is my custom, as we reach the Georgia border, we are uh, King Sun Charger. I am burning through every last, not burning through, eva evacuating every last electron from the battery pack. Look at this, because I've got range. I have range, I can do it, so I'm using it. As you can see, 27 miles projected at this pace, and I only have 18 miles to go. So, we're using it. It's quicker to, this is the best way to do it. Just be conservative when you leave, especially if you have a long distance between superchargers, like 100 miles, you've gotta be really conservative. And if you happen to have some left, then go for it. That, that way you get the most bang for your buck, the least amount of travel time on long distance uh, trailering. All right, we're heading out of Florida. It's gonna get started to get cooler now. Now that all the traffic's moving out of my way, I'm really burning it up. I can hear that engine cooling fan on super high. I'm gonna have to get off the road here anyway, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna turn it down. Can you hear that, the buzzing? Stop now. You hear that buzzing? It's like a bee's nest under there. It's trying so hard to cool the batteries. That, I don't, doesn't like the thousand watt hours per mile. Doesn't like that at all. That must be the, the, the limit. I'm gonna try to keep it under that, but I hardly ever drive that fast anyway with the trailer. You know, it's the trailer. You can't uh, afford using that much electricity. I'll run out. Listen to those fans go. It actually sounds like I'm supercharging right in the peak rate. That's what it sounds like. Doing everything it can to cool that, those batteries down. Here at Kingsland, Georgia, and yes, they have an expansion. Yes, this is a critical, critical stop. So I'm so glad to see that. I'm gonna see if I can pull in here without disconnecting. Are those expansion ones not working? It's hard to tell. I think they're working. I think it's just a protective barrier. See if I can pull up here without disconnecting and still use the cable if it'll reach. Well, as it turns out, I had to disconnect. If this barrier wasn't here, I could pull up alongside with the trailer. It would have been great, but it's too risky to try to tilt, turn in there and tell it, turn it out. Anyway, I'll block every other single charger over there, and I'm sure somebody else will be coming by. This is a critical area, which is why they're expanding. And there's my trailer over there. We are gonna go have to go all the way up. And of course I charge, plug, plugged into the old chargers here. I can go up to 90 kilowatts. These new smaller ones are only 72. Don't think they're newer and better. Those small units, that's why they're different looking. They're only 72 kilowatts maximum. All right, I've been here for what seems like forever. Okay, 2.30, that's it. We're gonna go for it. It's gonna be one of the longest drives we have to make, but it's time. And I was thinking this would be a real mess if it was raining right now. I just wanted to show you guys what I have to do to hook it up though. Balls go down, breakaway switch, chains, and lights, which are way up in here. I don't know if you can see. Everything's tucked way up in there. 
lights are electric right here. It's hard to get to. All right, we're a few miles in on the highway. You can see here's where I pulled off the highway last time. Then getting on the highway, look at all the energy I used, just getting up to speed on the highway. And I was a little bit too fast. I was like 53 miles an hour. Now I've settled it down to about 50 miles an hour. And it says we, it's projecting right now, this is instant range. This is whatever we're pulling in right now and projecting that we'll have 109 miles of range and we have 98 miles to go. So we should be able to make it. And I didn't think I'd be able to go 50 miles an hour. Maybe I won't. Or look, I'll say, say 100, it's changing. This is instant range. Once that big mountain goes away of me getting on the highway, I'm gonna change it over to the five mile uh, average so that I can see, make a better determination of the speed that I can drive. Life in the slow lane, just watching everybody pass me by. It is a nice day out, look at those clouds. But everyone's passing me. And I can bump it up because I've got, check it out, I've got 115 average at this speed of 50 miles an hour and only have to go 94, so I might bump it up a few miles per hour just to get there a little bit quicker. All right, well, it looks like we can just do the double nickel, 55, which is good. Everyone's still passing me by like I'm standing still. And I am going above the minimum of 40, but that is that is nice. I didn't necessarily think I'd be able to do 55. And I'm remembering that, you know, this software program has like between 10 and 20 miles of buffer, maybe more like 10 miles of buffer built in there. So if we see over here, it's telling me 94 projected and 88 actual that we have to drive. It's really more like 104, 105 that I've got in here. So I've got that kind of a buffer, which is nice. I'm learning, I think I would recommend that you set it to cruise at whatever fastest speed you can re relating to what the energy usage graph is and not speed it up like I just did that last one. That just overheats everything. It, it wasn't actually overheated, it didn't give me a problem, but why would you want to strain your car if you don't have to? Now that I'm learning long distance tricks like this, this is what I would recommend for sure. Oh man, it is raining. I shouldn't have said anything earlier. Look at that. We're driving right into it. Oh, shoot. Looks like I'm gonna get wet. Oh my gosh, this is just a tremendous amount of rain up here. Whoa. Welcome to life in the slow lane. It's only gonna get worse. Oh my gosh. I told you I didn't want it to rain. This could make, this is, I mean, it's already bad enough. I gotta charge for an hour and a half at some of these chargers. Then I have to drive at like 50, 55 miles an hour. I have to reduce my speed even more, as you can see. And now it's raining. I'm gonna get soaking wet unhooking this trailer. Oh my gosh. I have to unhook at the Savannah charger. It's gonna be so complex at this airport. Well, here we go. Well, I'm also finding out I was wrong about the buffer. Look, it says I got eight miles to go. I think it's right, because I only have 14 miles of rating, rated, regular rated range. Oh man, I, I was paying too close attention to this. I gotta give myself, if I'm paying this much close attention, I'm learning, I've gotta give myself more leeway, more leeway. I have to turn off the climate control and the radio now. I'm trying to increase range and reduce the speed. I'm gonna reduce the speed even more. Hopefully that'll help. Wow, it is absolutely pouring, my gosh. I hope this lets up soon. At least it's allowing me to drive slower and not freak people out. I really need to lower the speed here. All right, I'm at the minimum here, 40 miles an hour, but look, it's already restricting me because I am so far down, eight miles of range, oh man. And as I've experienced before, these last few miles just seem to disappear so fast. It's, it's not a linear rate, it doesn't seem like. 
All right, now we're about to hit traffic. If you know this area of Atlanta, right off the uh, 95, there's always traffic. It seems like getting off this exit. I don't know if it's gonna help or hurt me. We will find out. I'm just trying to accelerate very, very slowly and not have to use the brakes. Get a brake slowly too with the regen braking for maximum efficiency. It's like hypermiling. I used to do my hybrid. Maybe the timing will work out well. As you can see, it's 72, so the temperature has dropped, which is nice. I'm learning lessons here so fast. Oh my gosh. Temperature drops, I can turn off the air conditioner. Uh, what else? Well, it's pouring rain, so maybe by the time we get there, the rain will stop or have stopped. I hope. So maybe the timing could be good. I really hope. Okay, yeah, the, the, the projected range has gone up because there's lightning. Oh my gosh, I'm going so slow. And I need that, because look, oh man. That's the instant range there because I'm going so slow. Well, this might be more than normal traffic. Like you can see, something's going on up here. Yeah, that's an accident, all right. I even had to cancel the navigation because it tends to heat up the battery, if you know that, when it knows you're going to a supercharger, and that uses more energy. So, I only have two miles of projected range left, even at this rate. I am just barely gonna make this. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get wet. I'm gonna have to get this thing charged ASAP. Well, at least my bugs are getting off the car in the windshield. Well, look at all this water. It is like flooding here. Thunder and lightning again. Oh man, one mile. I hope I can do this. Whoa. Whoa. 1.21 gigawatts. If I only I can funnel that into my car, right? Remember that from Back to the Future? Don't know where and when the lightning's gonna strike. All right, I'm probably gonna get wet here. It's getting a ticket. Yes, yeah, it says clearance seven foot nine over height vehicles oversized. I'm gonna have to go on the oversized vehicles, and there's no overhang here, so I'm gonna get wet. Whoa! Looks like it's nearly impossible to maneuver in that oversized lot. You can't see the focus, but this is eight foot, not seven foot nine. So I'm gonna go through here. And there's another lot closer to the chargers I'm gonna use. Hopefully I can fit. All right, there's the chargers over there. And here is the overflow parking lot. This should have room for me to unhook. The other lot, yeah, just doesn't have any room for me. It's the problem. Yeah, there should be plenty of room here. There is plenty of room here, but unfortunately I'm down at zero. Look at that. Holy crap. Ah, let me get this thing disconnected and get over there and charge now. You're constantly losing energy with electric batteries. Electric batteries, what other type is there? So I've got to get this thing to the charger now. This is scary. Oh my gosh, so much rain. I got it, I gotta go to the bathroom really bad now too. You can see, we unhooked. Now, we get to go. It's still pouring rain, thundering and lightning. Okay, we're so close. I hope there's a spot for me too. There's a little sneak in entrance here, which is nice. They used to have a gate that they took down. I gotta make my, my ticket validated here, being Savannah. And we're to the right. We come in here to the right. Oh, there's a sp there's one spot for me. I think two spots. Yes. And I'm not doubling up, which is even better. 
Oh my gosh, yeah, you can see this. Look at this. Alright. You can hear the rain. Rain from the parking garage above is pouring onto the vehicle. Let's just get this sucker connected. And it's raining in here under the charger. I am not going to cut it that close again. I learned my lesson. Learned my lesson. Let's just see this thing charge. Sometimes, in my experience, it takes a little bit of going when you're down this low. But at least we did it. Three hours, 15 minutes. To top it all off, top it all off, I don't think this is even working. Somebody just pulled in next to me and they're leaving. I don't think it's working. Oh, great. All right. It finally kicked in. I had to switch chargers. I'm at a different one now. The other one had problems, and I've talked to other people that have been here, and they said it had problems too. These are newer ones, but it took forever. I was sitting on here for like 10 minutes, and it said it was charging, but nothing was happening. I guess it was protection for the battery pack, right? And even now, you can see I'm only at 31 kilowatts, so I'm going to be here for a while. A long while. Oh, my gosh. At least I made it. Could have been worse, right? Yeah. Oh, and maybe it'll stop raining by the time my car is ready. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I think the rain and the traffic really work in my favor. Otherwise, I would be, I would be stranded. I would be in tow with the trailer. It would have been bad. All right, I'll finish charging. I'm in the airport now. You have to go get your uh, ticket validated. Actually, right at the desk up there, which I already did, and uh, ready to make the longest drive of this journey, which is going to be 109 miles. The one I just did was like 102, 103. So I gotta be really careful, really careful. Well, I would have wished it had stopped raining, but it's still raining as you can see. It's just a light drizzle, but it's gonna make it for a wet trailer hooking back up. All right, the app says I'm at 2.30 and 235 is the max right now, even though it's factory 259 because of battery degradation, but I'm just gonna go for it right now at 230. Let's do it. way out in the back of the lot. There we are. At least it's not that much rain now. Really not much at all. Hope it doesn't pick up. I just gotta get this thing connected. Hitch lock. Good. Perfect. A little trick I've learned is that sometimes this latch doesn't want to go onto the ball when you're connecting. It, it, you have to force its hard to slide it over. Just get it down most of the way so it's, the ball is over it and then get in the car and move it back and forth a little bit and it locks it into place. And then you just got to put the pin in makes life so much easier. I'm going to do that all the time now. Got my ticket validated to get out of here. You can see they put the time on it. It's almost 4 p.m. now. I got to make sure to do this, whatever I'm 
doing this validation near the end of my charge session, not the beginning. Here we go, let's do this. Two hundred mile range. Wow, that's not gonna keep up once we get on the highway. This is our in traffic crawling along at zero range consumption. All right, I'm just gonna start by setting it at fifty miles per hour and check the range, see if we can make it. See how we do. I even have the HVAC on. It's getting kind of stuffy here. Pretty humid Savannah, Georgia climate, and you can see it's. Well, that's not an average, that's instant. I've got it on instant. But after we get about five miles in, I'll hit the average and see how we're doing. And I want to have extra. I definitely want extra. I learned my lesson last time. That was a tough lesson to learn. I'm glad I didn't need a tow. Again, look at the graph. See, it was real low when I got off the highway. Then it spiked up like I was climbing a mountain just to get up to speed to get on the highway. It's so sensitive and it's so easy to uh, use too much electricity. This thing in tow mode needs to totally reduce the effectiveness of the accelerator pedal, if you ask me, because it's just as effective as always in tow mode. It needs to scale it way, way, way back. That's my just my humble opinion here. All right, here we are at the average for the past five miles. You can see every little hill I've gone up and down, really obvious. And I got 114 miles of range and 100 miles to go. So it's a 14 mile buffer. I think we're good with that. I'm good with that anyway. I, I'm i gonna leave it like this, and if it gets any less than, if it starts creeping down to 10, I'm going to have to reduce the speed further, but we'll just see how it does after a period of time. It's just rain, rain, raining out there. Okay, I'm in South Carolina now. The rain has let up, as you can see, and also I noticed that the minimum posted here on the interstate is 45. So I I should be able to maintain 50 the whole way, so should be good. And I have a surprising few trucks behind me caravanning that are not passing me. I don't know why they're going so slow. All right, the rain is let up, and we're getting close to the charging spot, 28 miles away. As you can see, I'm still getting passed by everyone and their uncle. But we've been maintaining 50 miles an hour. And the weather's starting to get colder, so I've got the HVAC on. I think the heat's coming out a little bit. And um, see, projected 43 miles of range, and we have 27 left. So we're like 15 miles, same thing. 15 miles buffer, and we're doing, what are we doing? Uh, 50 miles an hour. So that's going to be it. I'd say that on the highway, Depending upon how often you want to stop for charging and risk taking the trailer off, and it depends on your planning, I'd say 50 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour is probably a good speed, somewhere in there, depending upon how far apart the chargers are. You know, with 50 miles per hour being you know up to 110 miles apart, at least for a 90 kilowatt pack on a Model X anyway. You know, I wish I had the 100 kilowatt pack, that would make a difference for sure, but I don't have it. so. Got to work with what you have, and of course I've got the degradation where I can only expect 235 miles of range and really only 230 because I can't get those last five put in at the supercharger without waiting for absolutely ever. So I think that's the balance point for me anyway with this uh, current setup. I was just listening to the radio now and playing it loud and I think it has an effect on range. You really notice it when you're towing. Cause look, now I'm down to 16 projected and seven to go. So I'm down like only a nine mile buffer. I haven't changed the speed or either that or the battery drains faster near the end, which I also think is probably the case. I've noticed that in normal driving and it probably is also multiplied with towing. Let me know what you guys think. And oh, one other point I wanna make here with towing. Another thing I've learned on this trip is you wanna to try to avoid towing and driving and needing charging during times of peak usage on the superchargers because you might have to wait 
and it's going to be slower because you're doubled up like I was in Savannah. I was doubled up with somebody, so it was slower and all those kind of things. Drive at night and drive weird off hours, you know, outside of the 9 to 5, I guess, which is probably the peak times, something like that. So another pointer. But good news as I approach Santee, 8 of 8 available, so I, don't, I probably won't have to unhook. That's another thing. If you go during off-peak hours, well, you have to unhook in Savannah because it's a drive in. It's a, it's a weird setup, right? Like a few of them are. But any other setup, you could probably not have to unhook. That's another benefit of going off hours. Well, it's doing it again. It's really starting to drop fast. Oh, my gosh. It's doing it again. Look. 12 miles, 4.2. Okay, we're at eight miles of range. I turned off the heat. I'm driving a little slower, 49 miles per hour now. But I gotta maybe give it even more of a buffer than 10 to 15 miles. Maybe more like 15 to 20 of the buffer is what I need going forward. Here we are, back at Clark's Hotel and Restaurant. I hear the uh, knock, some knocking on the tongue weight. Maybe it's a little too late. I'll have to check that out, but Hopefully, there's still nobody here and I can just pull in without unhooking and it looks that way. See, now on the old style, I wouldn't, well, unless I can grab that one on the end, I could have done it on the old style, but I'm gonna have to go with the slower charger without unhooking and there's no barrier in the way here, as you noticed at the one in South Georgia. So I can actually pull right up next to this thing and connect no problem. All right. Glad to be here. It's kicking in fast. It's good. It makes a difference if you don't go all the way down like I did last time. It took forever for the thing to start up. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Now before I go and use the bathroom, which I will, because I always do, let's see where we're going to go next. Actually, I want to try to go up to Florence and get dinner before it gets dark, or not, sorry, before, before the Chipotle closes. Florence, okay, there we go. 61 miles, so I'm probably going to need, let's see how many miles that actually is on the road. Sometimes it's longer. That's usually as the crow flies, they give you the mileage, and... Are they telling me here? They're not telling me. I'll have to look it up on Google Maps. All right, well, it's telling me 35 minutes, so I would probably want to double that and go 70 minutes is my guess. That's a real, real guesstimate, which means I'll be here 70 minutes. for. That's so about 7.15, something like that. And then, yeah, I'll be there before they close. Awesome, yes. I did hear some rattling. Let's also check the trailer connections. Shake it. I don't know what the rattling was. Everything seems to be tight and there seems to be good tongue weight on there. Oh man, it's almost, it's up to 500 pounds. That's the maximum tongue weight. I wonder why, I wonder if stuff shifted in there. But I don't want it to get any higher than that, obviously. So anything else I'd have to put backwards or towards the back of the trailer is just for future, my future planning. Interesting. Oh. Uh, nope. It's just, I guess it's, I never checked the tongue weight again after I strapped this and made it go more forward. Maybe that made all the difference because these, these are heavy. Uh, yeah, everything looks good here. See the light? Actually, it's automatically, I can feel the heat. That's gonna kill the battery too. I wanna make sure that's off, set to off. Very important that I do that. Oh yeah, look. This one moved forward and those tires, ha. Huh. See, those? these two were in the back. I might, after I go to the bathroom, I'm gonna come back out. I'm gonna come back out and try to shift this thing around. I'm gonna go to the bathroom first. Oh 
All right, now I have to go back and review the video to see how this moved up, but huh. I think maybe if I do anything, I'll move it back and then put these tires in between there and the next thing. That'll that'll help for now anyway. And even on this one right here, this is loose. Really, I'm not doing anything. I, I, I don't know if we're on the outside or where, but it's got to. <sighs> Sure, how it's got to connect down there, but it's got to go through some of these handles. It's got to be fed through these to uh, to keep it steadied during all this travel. It just things just move around. Even with the the locks on, you can see that they've left marks on the floor. They've been skidding a little bit as we hit bumps. That's what happens. And moving that one case back has definitely moved it off of the 500. It was real deep into the 500. Now it's below maybe 400 or so, which is actually where we want it. We've got a total of 4,000 pounds. So that's perfect. So glad, so glad I have this scale. I would have no idea otherwise. And you can see all I did was I moved this one back. So we got, we got two back here, the heavy ones, and then two up front. And it kind of balances the load and gets the tongue weight we need. And then everything else can go in between. I have more room for everything else. I have more stuff to put in here, but I got plenty more room, which is going to be good. I'm going to need need the room, but I don't want to go over weight. But of course, when I add more things in the future, I'm going to be pulling more weight all together, so that's going to affect range potentially. Maybe another, might be close to another thousand pounds that I add to here. So we will see how it goes. All right, so what I did on this one is I put it into the heaviest, dutiest ring, D ring down there. The ones on the floor are more heavy duty. Got it through here, and then over to this one on the floor, because the ones on the walls aren't as heavy duty. Definitely not. Floors are better, and I got to keep that in mind going forward. This is just not as strong as that. Alright, that's, that's pretty strong now. It's going to hold it. That should be good. Hopefully I can put these tires in here. Okay, I did get the tires in, so hopefully that'll help keep everything straight and solid in here when we're driving. Another reason, not just for the tongue weight, but you don't want stuff moving when you're driving is because it affects the, when the weight shifts in the trailer, that's not a good thing. It affects so many other things too. If these parts, uh, they can be loose, that's okay. All right, I had to reroute the ones in the front too. They're nice and snug now. They're wrapped through the handles and they're gonna work better. This one's attached to the tie down up front and this one down on the floor. All right, we're good to go. We're ready to go now. All right, well, based on previous calculations, and this might be a little bit generous, but we only have to go 60 miles, I think. I think we're ready to go. Uh, no, wrong, wrong, wrong there. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Let's head on out. The car locked me out. Well, looks like we settled back down at 50 miles an hour again as the ideal speed, and I'm glad I didn't stay any shorter. I gotta do a better job of calculating before I leave. It's like next to impossible to make up once you leave the supercharger. Let's take a look over here and see, see what I mean. We've got 69 miles projected, let's just say 70, and we've got 52 to go, so I want to keep it between 15 and 20 miles of buffer, and looks like we've achieved that, at least for now. And I'd rather have really 20. Before it was between 10 and 15, now I want to do 15 to 20 miles of buffer, really closer to 20. Well, quick change of plans here. I've had to dial back the speed already to 46 miles an hour. Look how much electricity we're using. I don't know if we're constantly going uphill. Maybe we are because it is lower in Florida and it's sensitive to all that stuff. So you can see average is 646. I need to get this thing down below, right at or below 600 to be okay with what I've got left. 600 is always the goal, which means 600 is a, a doubling of normal usage or rated usage anyway. So I got, see, you got 45 miles to go, 64 miles projected. I want to try to stay right at 20 miles buffer because who knows what's... I mean, I'm already getting a little bit surprised at what's happening here. And I think, again, because we're going uphill, I think going uphill makes a huge difference 
See, we're approaching Manning, and I think that's we're, we're kind of more inland from the coast here. And I think you know it's, it's feeling it. It's definitely feeling it. All right, I was able to bump us up one more mile per hour now to 47. And you can see I got the consumption at just under 600 watt hours per mile. And I think that ideally, seeing how things perform here, for Model X, you want to keep it right around 600 uh, consumption. I don't think you really want to go above that because not only is it really going to impact your range significantly, it's also going to build up a tremendous amount of heat, you know, because of really overworking these parts. So I'd say, you know, lock in whatever speed that allows you over the last five miles and continuously to stay at around 600 kilowatt or watt hours per mile. That, that's my recommendation. Well, I have really had to do some adjusting here with the hills. And some of them you don't even notice. It's such a gradual uphill as we're pulling away from the coast. But they, you can see we're at 52 now. We were down at 46 at one point. And we're going to finish hopefully right around 20 miles of usable range left, which was my goal. So that's good. And I also forgot we're going to a mall here, and it's Saturday night. And these, you know, these chargers at Florence, South Carolina, are placed right in premium spots in the mall. So I think I may have to disconnect the trailer in the dark, which really sucks. But maybe I don't. We'll, we'll see what happens. Look, it's telling me 16 of 18 are available, which is great. The problem is, like I said, these are in premium spots. A lot of times just regular cars ice them. So who knows, if there's 16 of 18 available up and it's not they're not iced, I might be good to go. We'll see. All right, here we are, right near the mall. It's working well. And look, we're not going in the red. I think having, you know, between 15 and 20 is the goal, really 20, trying to stay at 20 miles of remaining range when you get there, that'll keep it out of the red zone in the battery, which is definitely gonna help you out. Tesla should come up with some kind of programming like this where if you put it in tow mode and you tell them you're in there, it'll determine you know how much you need how long you need to charge for to keep you at or around 600 watt hours per mile and then arriving with a projected range of t about 20 miles left. That could easily be put into the software. I wouldn't th think about all this stuff. Maybe they will. Maybe Elon Musk will do that. Okay. Here we are. Let's see. See, this is crazy. It's crazy time here. Uh, be interested to see what happens with finding a spot. Here we go. All right, we'll soon find out if the guy left his cones up. I know the guy who did this when he first started doing it is it it awesome that he's done it. And it may have worked here. It may have saved me a spot. Look, I see cones. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, see, stop, electric vehicle charging only. So when nobody parks here, I'm just gonna try to scoot around this one right here and charge without disconnecting the trailer. I don't know if it's possible, but I'm gonna try. Gotta make sure I don't hit that curb. It's gonna be close. Whoa. All right, now let's see if this is gonna work. I may have, oh man, it's gonna be, it's gonna fit. Yes, it is gonna fit. I wonder if I can get out of here without hitting the trailer under the curb. I think I hit these curbs a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell. My front tire. Let me see if I did. Yeah, I did. I brushed it a little bit there and there, I think. But it does. It did fit. It's gonna move this. So that nobody parks here. We should be good to go. Okay, so to not make any mistakes this time, I'm going to figure out the distance and multiply by 2.39, and that's what I should have. This is what I calculated a long time ago before I even started towing with all this weight. But, um, and of course, it's not giving me distance. Why does it not give me the distance? Okay, so it's 61 miles times 2.39, which is 149 miles or 150. That's what I need. So I need to put another 100 miles of range on. I had to calculate that by hand. I don't know why it doesn't show me. Sometimes it shows me the mileage, but this time it's not. So that's not right. 15 minutes, okay? Uh, 
but we have to put on, I need to put on another 100 miles of range, get it to 160. That's what I need to have to comfortably make that drive. So for right now, going to Chipotle, I saw whoever was parked up there, you probably saw him earlier. The mall security came and shoot him away. So that's good. They're doing, they're doing their job. That's where my trailer is. See it way down there. This is where I'm going to eat. Man, I remember not too long ago when these Chipotle's always be crowded with lions all the time. Now, I'm, there's only like two people eating in there. I can see there's nobody. Oh my gosh. This whole chain has been just going downhill and continues to go. But I still eat here and I'm glad I can do it without competition. Yeah, there's, I don't think nobody eating here. Oh my gosh. All right, we're done charging here. Got 164 miles of range. The only thing I gotta watch out for is these ridiculous speed bumps. Look how low they are. They're real low and steep. So I have to almost be completely stopped to go over them. Whoa, even that was too fast. They're slow, and then the trailer tires. Let's see. Two axles. Boom, boom. Whoa. Well, at least initially, it looks like that 2.39 or 2.4 times the uh, distance needed to travel works because I've got the cruise control set on 50. I'm at 608 average. 608 watt hours per mile average. I want to stay around 600. And it looks like I've got 84 miles of predicted range and 57 miles to go. 60 so that looks about right everything looks pretty good so far all right made it to lumberton i believe they've expanded this one since the last time i've been here well this hasn't changed that place is still vacant let's see are they still in the same location here yes and they've added more yes i can pull in without disconnecting yeah because i got my trailer Barely gonna. No, nope. didn't work that time. Try it again. I should have got a little closer. <laughs> These are notoriously short hoses. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, and got my door open, but let's. Here's my new way to figure out how much to charge. It's not multiplied by 2.4. That's not accurate because when you get to high numbers, it's way too much. And I was never able to have enough battery capacity to do that. So what I want to do instead is find out how far we have to go. We're going up to this charger, Fayetteville. And it's 25, it's actually almost 30 miles driving. It's 25.7 as a crow flies. But 30 miles, so you do... You want to have your reserve, which is 20 miles. And since we're, we're doubling everything, let's put 40 miles. Then you double your distance. So if it's uh, 30 miles, then that means we've got to put in 60 miles worth of electricity plus the 40. That's 100 miles total. Does that make sense? Double your mileage and add your reserve, which is 40. It's always going to be 40. So we are at 42 right now. And we just have to go up to 100, so we got to put about 60 miles of range on this, and then hit the road immediately. Don't stay any longer than you need to, because and even if you, I would never, unless you're in a super hurry, I would never tow near the limit in a hurry. Um, you don't want to have to do anything like that. So you want to treat your car well. So this is going to treat your car well. No need to stay any longer. Just go right ahead once you once you get to that limit, and that's what we're going to do. But right when you hit 100 miles. We're, we're going to go right away. I'm going to use this technique. What is going on here? Uh, for the rest of the drive and uh, see how it's going. Well, now I changed my mind. It's doing such a great job charging. I'm just going to wait till it starts to, to slow down and not, not stop at 100. 
It'll probably be more like 130, 40, maybe even 150. Actually, no, maybe like 130. Yeah, that's what I'll probably take. Whatever it starts to taper off, that's when I'll unplug. Yeah, see, it's still going strong here. And as you've, if you've watched any of my other videos about long distance travel with supercharges, you always want to go up till it tapers no matter what anyway. So I think the same is true with, with towing and, and sure, I guess you can go a little faster. I will go a little faster in the next one. And it's getting late. It's 1026. So I just want to get there as soon as possible and this will definitely help me out. It's definitely starting to taper down now. And as you can see, what really matters if you're not familiar is this kilowatt hour number. And you know, the larger charger, some of them are up to 150 kilowatts per hour max. Mine is, my pack on my car is limited to 90 because I've supercharged it so much. And the urban chargers are 72. So I'd say once you get to 72, you're no longer really rapid charging at your supercharger and you can just get going at that point in time, which is, we're almost there. All right, let's head out. get it out of there. I didn't have it in right in the first place. That's what happens. Well, it looks like that's earned me the right to go just a little bit faster. All right, we're here at Fayetteville. This is going to be the last stop of the night for me. I am so tired right now. I'm gonna charge up a little bit now so I can car camp and have some climate control, just a little bit, and then I'll charge up again in the morning when I leave here. I hope, I hope I don't have to disconnect the trailer. Let's see how I can do this, if I can do it. Oh man, someone's way down there. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, this is gonna work. I can do it here. No problemo. Hey, you need me to move it off? All right. Just wanna make sure we're charging. Yes. Bathroom break and then I'm going to bed. Good night. All right, I'm up now. Rise and shine. Woo! As it turns out, my next stop is 93 miles away. So I got two long distance ones actually. And then I got the 100 something miles. So uh, just like yesterday, two long ones start off. Gotta charge pretty much all the way up. Another Tesla Axiom rule of thumb I've determined on this trip is never underestimate your ability to accidentally have this top button pushed when the key fob is in your pocket. And what happens? The doors all shut on you or something else by accident. Battery pack's a lot cooler this morning. No more overheating. 
You can tell by the absence of the fan noise. Yes, that time of the morning for me, every single morning. Time to hit the road. Well, this trip to the next supercharger in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina is actually longer than I was anticipating. It's like, it's 92 miles, so I'm taking it easy here at only 45 miles an hour starting off until I see how we're doing with range, and then I can make some adjustments as we go. All right, now that I've built up quite a buffer, I'm going to increase the speed. I was concerned about the cold temperatures and me using the heat, but I haven't even had to turn the heat on. It's 61 degrees, and I don't know what this would be like in really cold weather, but probably wouldn't be makeable in really cold weather. You can see right now I've got 73 and 125 predicted range and I only need a buffer of 20 miles so I can bring the speed up until everything drops down with projected range to about 93 miles um, over the last five miles which is what this graph is. All right just about sunrise as you can see. We're settling well in well here at 50 miles an hour now. I was like well below 600 watt hours per mile before, like 550. Now I'm like 640. So should be a good trip unless we encounter hills. Hills and detours, those are your enemy. That's why I gotta have that extra buffer in at the end. And who knows about the hills? Any little hill is so so sensitive. I mean, look at this. So sensitive to every little hill. Raising it up again. I'm at 52 miles an hour now, which is good. And you can see 56 miles to go. And can you read it there? 85 miles projected range, so doing well. Sunrise. Ooh, I'm drifting. I'm gonna capture that for you. All right, we're now up to 54 miles an hour, which is good. Oh man, you gotta keep keep a close watch on this thing. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I've lost all my advantage. I had to dial it back. See, 42 miles to go. Projected range 59, so I'm down to 17 miles of buffer. I need to keep it at 20. At least that's my goal anyway, so I've had to dial it back to 50 miles an hour. you'd enjoy the sunrise views from the road. It's all open up nicely here. Look at that house too. Wow. I'll mention too, I've been having some phantom braking issues again this morning. I don't know if you noticed that one of those last clips here, a few clips ago, ended in a phantom brake instance, but it, I just as I was stopping the camera so you, you didn't get it in there, but so it's not on the autopilot it's not the autopilot system that's doing the phantom braking it's just traffic aware cruise control it just is not perfected that's uh, the, the missing link there in the system for autopilot all right the system just lightened up for daytime brightness and more there's been more instances of phantom braking it's crazy Here's a bridge, a bridge shadow. Let's see if it 
No, it actually it's been happening at weird times that I wouldn't suspect it. Like I'd suspect it on that bridge shadow, but not these other times it's been happening. It's just weird. Oh, there's the phantom breaking right there. See that? It's very disconcerting. We were set for 50 and yeah, see we're back at 50 now. I captured it a little bit there so you could see it. Especially when you're pulling a trailer. Oh my gosh, it's one thing when you're not pulling a trailer, but when you're pulling a trailer and it does that, I usually have to get my foot in the accelerator as quickly as I can to just avoid who knows what. And if someone's right behind me, I mean, I got this big box trailer on here. You know, you can't, you just can't see right behind that. If, you're, if someone's driving behind me real close and it starts to break suddenly. Hoping I can stay near, at or near 50 for the rest of the trip. 30 miles to go and 48 miles range. Actually, I might need to drop it down already. 49. Oh, another issue I want to mention, a potential issue towing with the Model X is the lack of a spare tire. You probably saw earlier in the video, I've got two spare tires for my trailer just in case anything happens. But with the Tesla, I have no spare tires, there's no room, which is why there's a lot of extra room in this car to store things because of no spare tire. And furthermore, Model X has staggered wheel design, so I need to have two spare tires, one for the front, one for the rear. If I was gonna have a tire that would fit, you know, at all. But fortunately, I've never had a blow a blowout or a, a tire go flat on me. I haven't had that happen yet. And I gotta keep monitoring those rear tires, that reminds me. Gotta monitor those rear tires. Because they have a tendency, to, well, a tendency, they will get eaten up on the inside where you can't see them unless you get underneath the car and check. So I gotta do that soon. Man, it must have been going down a slight hill. I just didn't notice it, but man, you, the car notices it. I mean, I just have to bump it up. I'm doing 52 now and I'm still at only 540 watt hours per mile average. I'm way ahead, 23 miles to go, 54 miles range. So I've, I can bump this up even more. Just gotta keep an eye on it. All right, another update on the phantom braking. I've also found that what I thought was phantom braking actually isn't phantom braking. All right, it occurs when we're approaching, and we are right now, an acceleration lane for an on-ramp interchange. And I guess what I've determined after seeing this a couple times, I wasn't sure initially, but I am now because it just happened again. If there are cars getting onto the limited access road like this one on that acceleration lane, the cameras must be working on the side in conjunction with this because they will see the cars and start braking so that we don't merge at the same time. And it's not phantom braking. It's just what the car is doing. And since it's not an autopilot, I didn't notice that. I didn't know that that was part of autopilot, but it is. So there's, a, there's like, a, it's more than just traffic aware cruise control, or maybe it's side traffic aware cruise control in addition to front, now that the uh, side cameras are in play. So anyway, that's pretty cool. All right, we're just about here at Rocky Mount. Comfortable level of range left, 41 miles. Hopefully I can pull in and charge without having to disconnect. It'll be nice. I'm gonna be here for a while. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. No one's here, yes. The only potential issue I see are these barriers keep making me keep my distance. See right at the, at the pavement level. It may make me keep my distance. Well, if I can't get in that way, I can always maybe get this one here. I'm gonna try getting that last one here first, pulling up to it and see if I can connect. All right. I think it'll work. Yes. Hopefully this is a good charger.
All right, and, and driving this, and you know, considering the tongue weight, I thought was a little too high. The other day, I'm thinking I might need to readjust some things again, and put maybe this back here, and the spare tires up in the corner. That might be a better distribution of the weight. All right, we are prepping for the longest drive of this whole trip, and the longest one I'll ever have to do, hopefully. It's 108 miles in between here and the next supercharger, which is Chester, Virginia. And you can see we're adding up. We got 99 miles at 571. We try to keep about 600. So we're going to need more mileage than that. There is another one in Richmond that's not too far away, but unfortunately it's 127 miles to get there. This is by the roads. So we're going to choose a shorter one, even though there's less charging stations here. I'm going to have to unhook the trailer. Certainly it's at a Wawa gas station. The other one that's further away has like 18 chargers and I probably won't have to unhook, but um, we're just not going to make it. And it's still going to be a while. Here we got 100 miles of range until this thing is full. We got to get it totally full. Oh my gosh, yeah. We got to get this thing up to 235 probably. So it says five minutes, but that is not right. Not at all. I got plenty of time to work on my computer, which I'm going to do right now. Let's get to work. All right, we're almost ready to go. I need to get 230 miles of rated range in order to make this. I want to check out the back tires while I'm here. This is something that has always been an issue. Let's see how they're doing on this trip. Okay. It's the inside edges of the back tires. They are definitely wearing on the inside. And I did just lighten up the tongue load a little bit. Hopefully that'll help. This is usually the worst one on the passenger side in my experience. Let's take a look over at the driver's side too. Okay, here's what the driver's side looks like. Also not too bad, but you can definitely tell the passenger side is worn more on the inside. But we're doing well. I, mean, I have these up to maximum pressure, 50 pounds PSI cold or 50-51 cold in the back. You definitely need that when towing. Okay, You definitely need to have the PSI up there on the back tires or you're going to have major problems. And it's also listed like that in the... Uh, Tesla owner's manual. Well, even with making that move, the tongue weight is still up there. There it is. That's a better, clearer picture. That's what we are at right now. Of course, 500 is the limit. So, got to be careful about loading anything else. Nothing more in the front. Nothing more can fit in the front anyway. And just an FYI, this is what it says here on my trailer. Okay, 230 miles of range. Let's go. Just an FYI, when I came off 95, there was a guy working the corner right here, asking for money. He had like a drink in his hand too. See those backpacks? Those are his. I was also stopped when I was at the supercharger and somebody was asking me for money just driving by. I don't think I've ever had that happen before at a supercharger. All right, goodbye Rocky Mount. Get ready for us, Chester, Virginia, our longest, longest distance ever with the trailer, fully loaded. All right, we started this leg off dicey in terms of being able to make it. Look, 97 miles, but now look, we got estimated 158 miles of range. That, how did that happen? Even in the beginning of my drive here, it was looking questionable. So 97, I should be set my speed higher so it's about 120 miles of projected range to give me the buffer. Well, I just bumped it up to 52 miles an hour. You can see I'm averaging only 511 watt hours per mile. I don't know why. Maybe just a lot of downhill here. Who knows? Maybe there's uphill and the last leg, downhill now. I'm also not using climate control. That might have a big factor. I just don't need it right now. It's 68 degrees out. And it's very comfortable in here. Well, I'm looking more at the trip. I'm going to this one right here in Chester. There's another one just north of there that's large, like I said. I, I tried to program that in, but I thought the one above that, uh, just above Richmond, is where I want to stop. And I want to not stop at the one after that. 
I'm going to skip it and go to the one above the 95. So there's a lot of strategy involved. I guess that's what I'm trying to tell you. A lot of strategy involved with planning this trip. It's not as straightforward as you think, and even that is not something that can be programmed in. Uh, unless, well, I mean, because that one charge I want to skip on 95 is just very difficult to get in and out of. It's also at a Wawa, but it's at a much busier Wawa, and I would definitely have to drop the trailer. And who knows, maybe I won't have to drop the trailer at this one in Chester. We'll just see when we get there. And look, I'm doing 50 miles an hour, too, and everything's lining up with range doing 50 miles an hour that's pretty good considering this is the longest leg I've ever driven but I, also it may be attributable to not having the climate control on because I do not have it on at all I just don't need it there look traffic aware cruise control is slowing down for this truck that was right next to me you see that it did that all on its own that's pretty amazing glad glad to see that I wasn't paying attention that helped now check it out, I'm, I'm at 52 miles an hour, I'm able to maintain this, and I think a lot of this, you know, this is a long, my longest stint ever between superchargers, and the only difference here, because this is not flat ground, we're definitely going up and down hills, is no climate control. So climate control must really make a big difference. I don't need it today, thankfully, and I'm just maintaining, look, 52 miles an hour, I've got average of 580 kilowatts per mile. So we're doing really well, very efficient driving, and I think it's because of lack of climate control usage. So really consider that if you're having to do these long distance things like I am, there's not enough superchargers, is think about not using it, if you can get away with not using it anyway. I wouldn't roll the windows down because it's gonna increase the aerodynamic drag. You just gotta turn the climate control off. We're in Virginia now. You know, apart from this life in the slow lane thing and, you know, constant issues here with just range anxiety, it is a very pleasant way to tow. Very pleasant. I mean, I, I have another vehicle I can use to tow with that's uh, gasoline powered. Oh, here comes the car. Let's try this out. Let's see how the tra traffic aware cruise control does. Oh, see? See this? It's slowing down dramatically and letting the car in. What do you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? It works when towing. It does that when towing. That's great. Love to see that. Okay, I was uh, mentioning that it's very pleasant driving here, aside from the range anxiety issue, because it's so quiet. There's no revving engines, there's no struggling ever. There's no struggling. It never feels like a struggle on the car's part. And you don't hear that constant busyness and revving up an exhaust of somebody else towing. I mean, so it's, it's definitely a trade-off. I mean, you, anybody else can just stop at any gas station and keep pouring unlimited fuel at, at a cost, you know, into their vehicle. And that's what most tow vehicles do. But they are loud. And they have revving stuff, like that truck right there. And that one's not even that loud. But there, there are so many loud vehicles I see going by. Engines revving and spinning. You just don't hear any of that. It's so nice, this kind of travel. Check it out, without climate control on, on this leg of the trip, I'm at 56 miles an hour now, and we're hitting hills. We are definitely hitting hills. It's getting less and less flat as we go, but it's the lack of climate control that makes a difference. Oh, and look, there's some big trucks coming on the highway. A lot of what I think maybe has been happening with phantom braking is related to these acceleration lanes, and maybe the system being too sensitive to traffic aware cruise control. Let's see how, how we do here with this truck. Now it's gonna st it's gonna break for this truck. I'm almost certain. We're going 56. Holy shit! It's not it's not breaking. Okay, it didn't work here. So sometimes so I, it's not reliable. <laughs> That's what I just found out from that. Because other times it has started breaking. Maybe that truck was going so slow that the speeds it realized it's not gonna move over. I don't know. But I also now that I'm going jogging my memory. I'm realizing that the areas where we have had phantom braking issues me having these issues on this thousand mile trailer pulling long distance trip is I think related to those acceleration lanes because it's in the brain we know that of the system with the software where it is scanning for potential merging traffic yielding issues those kinds of things so I think it's related to that 
and maybe, um, although I'm sure some of them weren't, but I think maybe some of them were. Just even if there was no car there, it was just you know being hypersensitive. Maybe there was one on the shoulder. I don't even know. Those are my random thoughts as I'm going crazy in the slow lane here. All right, we're getting close to Chester. My goal for today is, is to meet Denise for dinner in enough time for her to get to bed at a decent time and not eat late. Oh, there we go again. Phantom braking. Phantom braking. Oh. See, it's this acceleration lane. Sometimes these acceleration lanes freak out the system. I think that's what it is. And you just saw it. You just saw it, okay? This may happen in the regular autopilot too, and maybe that's a clue as to what's actually going on with the regular autopilot, because this is one of the systems. Up oh, here comes another car on the acceleration lane. See how it handles it. It's watching with these side cameras. See, even though this doesn't have autopilot, you're not allowed to have autopilot when you're driving in tow mode. It won't let you, it locks you out. Okay, anyway, I wanna to try to meet Denise for dinner. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. We'll see how this is going, but this is a, such a slow pace and it's almost, it's 11, I'm not gonna get there until 11.30 and I may have to unhook the trailer even more time. But thankfully the next stop, I think we're gonna skip up to Glen Allen is not that far. So I'll start building up some extra range and I'll be able to drive faster on the highway. I think that's what's gonna end up happening here. These rural areas, what I found is the rural areas have larger gaps. That means I have to drive slower on the highways. It's the reverse of what you'd think. The more urban built up areas, you can tow and drive faster on the highway. Interesting. I'm almost done with all my grapes. This is the second batch. I had the one yesterday, had those grapes and strawberries for yesterday, had all the strawberries and almost all the grapes today. This is stuff is awesome. Organic, and I don't have to drink water because it keeps you hydrated. Okay, this is the exit, and I just pushed the button or tapped the screen, and it says seven of eight available. I might be able to pull in without disconnecting. We will see, we'll see, I hope so. Look at that, I got instant range, projected range 999 miles <laughs> at this rate of recharging all the time. Oh no, things changed. This is looking like it's not possible now, four of eight. It's hard to tell from here. Maybe they were wrong. Yeah, they were wrong. What should I do? Should I disconnect or not? I'm gonna try to pull them without disconnecting. Mm, it's gonna be risky here. Now I'm gonna have to disconnect. Otherwise I'd be blocking everybody. Well, I've never had this issue before. I guess I'm on the wrong side of the decline. It won't raise it up high enough, but I'm gonna just drop the suspension into low and that should take care of it. Suspension. Ride height. I should put it in very low. Drop it down. Wait till that stops spinning. And then check it. All right, we're done. Let's check it. Oh yeah, that did it. No problem, let's go charge. All right, we're charging now. I gotta calculate how long I gotta be here, but I might just wait since I already unhooked till we get off of the top uh, level charging, you know, down to 72 kilowatts. Let me see. Yeah, we're at 32 miles now, so we'll get up to like 125 or so. I think I'm just gonna wait it out and then stop at Glen Allen like I was planning. Yeah, now that I see the trailer, that is quite an incline. I thought it was level. But, you know, it's the air suspension that lets me get out of that pickle. But it's better to be that way than the other way around, because the other way around would have caused it to roll down the hill. You've got to stop this, your trailer, unless you got wheel chocks. I need to get wheel chocks, actually. Um, some real wheel chocks is what I need to get, definitely. Okay, once again, I would never assume anything. Look. It's 25, I'm 25 miles away. So using my rule of thumb that I've developed, 25 times two is 50 miles plus 40 miles of, of uh, backup range. That's 90 miles of charge. So that's just barely, if I get over like the 120, that's just barely gonna give me a little bit extra, not a whole lot. 
You see, sometimes I'm nice. I could have blocked these, but if someone else came along, it would be a problem, right? So, I didn't block them. Disconnected. That's good supercharger etiquette, I think. Check out how low this car looks. This is in the super low mode. And you can see how the back tires camber out. See that? It definitely wears on the inside there when you have it in low mode. Front's not as obvious, but the back is definitely cambering out. Okay, and this is the sound of full on top level supercharging. I can feel the air rushing in here to cool everything off. I don't have the climate control on, remember? I didn't have it on at all with this last leg. This is all the supercharging fans. Yeah, you can see where we are, it's top level. It's gonna start tapering very, very soon. All right, we're just about done here. Okay, time to disconnect right, and, and reconnect. It's busy here, but it is way busier at that Wawa in Fredericksburg. That's why we're going to do everything we can to avoid it, and we will avoid it. All right, so that trick to lock it into place. That should do it, hopefully. Yep, right in the place, no problem. Good. Now we're in low and we gotta raise the suspension up, but just to show you the difference that when this thing's tilted too far forward, the tongue weight is right up at 500 now, which we can't have. We need to have to be below 500, which we were before, and it'll change when we raise the suspension. All right, everything looks good here. So I think we're ready to go. All right, so on the suspension, oh, it's already up a standard. Huh? Wait a minute. Well, maybe it's because we're on a downhill. That's at, right at 500. But, oh well. And are we in tow mode? Yes, we're in tow mode. So I guess it changes it automatically. Maybe it just changed it. All right, we gotta get out of here now. To maneuver this parking lot. Everything look good with the trailer? I hope so. All right, we're gonna have to go out the other side. We're not gonna be able to turn around. There's just nowhere to turn around here. Totally full. It is so weird driving this thing around because I've, it's not making any noise at all. A person doesn't even see me because it's not making any noise. See, I've got no climate control on. Windows are down. You can't hear anything. There's a little squeak there on the ball. That was it. You hear everyone else, but not me. And a little, few creaks there. That's the ball. Oh, my brakes. They always tend to do that when I'm hitting it. Final stop. Alright. 
We good? Yeah. Off to the highway. Next stop, Glen Allen, Virginia. This is where I record my curve of death videos. I'm not doing it now because there's no autopilot. But if you want to see it, check out my playlist, Curve of Death. All right, well, for the first time ever, I am just going with the flow of traffic, maybe up to 10 miles over the speed limit, depending upon what everybody else is doing. And I have no problems because the chargers are not that far apart. That's the key to this whole thing, is having enough chargers not that far apart. And of course, if they were a drive through where you could just drive through like a gas station, even better. Because I didn't really stay long at the Chester one just to get it up to, to the, uh, the peak charging rate dropped off to 72 kilowatts. And I would do the same. I would just keep hopping from charger to charger without disconnecting. I wouldn't mind doing that. And I could just drive this at a normal rate on the highway. But until the charging infrastructure develops like that, it's gonna be a compromise that probably most people are not willing to do other than someone like me. And I'm not doing, I'm gonna be doing a lot of this long distance towing, but these trips are not gonna happen all that often. It's not gonna be like a weekly thing where I'm going long distance with the trailer. So anyway, some thoughts there. Hey, I'm about to pass an 18 wheeler now, not the other way around. Yep, here we go, and I'm only going 61. I could be going a lot faster than this. It's starting to rain, and that could be a, that could be an issue. passing by downtown Richmond, Virginia. And driving at a good clip with the trailer on. sign telling you where we are. There's some guys in a Ford, some Ford trucks way up there on the left. They were just recording me. There's a guy hanging out the window. He's recording his truck and my, me pulling the trailer. So if you see me driving on the highway on somebody's video, that's why. I, I can't catch up with them. They're going way too fast. I mean, if the road was straight, I could, but there's too many curves and there's too much traffic. I don't know if you can see those guys way up there. But he was literally hanging out the window. I was waving at him. There, the, there they are in the left lane. You can see him up there. We may, we may be catching him. Yeah, traffic. We may catch right up to him. Let's see. Well, we're closer to him than we were. I got the torque. Let's use it. Guy's not hanging out the window now, but he had, yeah, there he is. He's, he is hanging out the window. You can see him up there. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch him at this point. I don't want to get over in the left lane again. But there is power here, let me tell you. I just got so much weight. I mean, I'm pulling 4,000 pounds. That's almost 10,000 pounds altogether. It probably is with the other stuff besides the dry weight of this vehicle. Dry weight meaning just no luggage but it is pulling strong it's, there's no lack of power with this I'm telling you no lack of power and this experience is definitely telling me that it's more like a lack of confidence in the cornering and shifting of weight and everything just all the dynamics of towing that I'm more concerned about so like now that the road's straightening out also the speed limit's going up I can uh, get up to speed here more quickly Now 
now I'm getting close to the supercharger. My hope is that there'll be a spot for me without having to unhook and more traffic ripples. Oh, that was fun. A little bit of an adrenaline rush. Those four trucks are usually the guys who block all the superchargers. You've been seeing that in the news. But they seem kind of friendly. They, I think they're just amazed to see a Tesla pulling something big at speed. They don't, of course, they don't even know how heavy it is, but we all know it's pretty heavy. But you'd never know by the way this thing responds. Amazing amounts of power. And I was not even, I wasn't flooring, not even close. Not even close. Had so much more power in reserve, just couldn't use it all. I just have to cut across four lanes of traffic in a very, like two blocks time to get over here. So I know the trailer lights are working and I guess I leave an impression on people. They want to get out of my way, which is nice. 20 stalls available, 12 of 20. So let's see if they're spread out. Some good supercharger etiquette, don't spread out. Get all together so that big trailers can come in like me and not have to unhook. That's so nice when I don't have to do that. Okay, uh, that Model 3 is parked. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. I think I'm gonna have to disconnect. I'll drive through here, but I don't think it's gonna be possible. Yeah, see if that Model 3 was over at 10B, it would be okay. But all these guys are all spread out. Those are drive-ins. That one here on the end has got somebody. I'm not gonna be able to do it. I gotta disconnect. How's that for a parking job? Oh my gosh. Hopefully the incline is correct. Hopefully this works. Even this parking lot, see I thought it was straight, but it's obviously slanted. From, this is uphill and that's downhill, and that seems even more, even more severe over there, so this is probably the best I'm going to do. I just hope it's not going to roll forward when I do that. i got to find something. Maybe there's a rock somewhere I can put underneath there. That's what I need to have. Even just a clot of dirt. This might work. Just wedge it in there so it can't go anywhere. And then I see a rock over here, but I need to get some wheel chocks. This is actually a rock. I don't know if this will stop. Right. Well, maybe it's not. It's just a clot of dirt again. Put this one over here. Hopefully that'll, that'll do it. Okay, it's a little more precarious than I would like, but it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. So this should work. Didn't even have to lower the suspension, but it's because it's on that incline. Oh, now that Model 3 leaves. Just now. Well, I'll probably be blocking too many people. It's probably much more friendly to do what I've done here. But I'll take his warmed up spot number 8A. Oh, Even with my lead foot, we didn't drop down that far, so we are right in the thick of it immediately, which is great. And here you can see my tire pressures. These are warmed up tire pressures, but obviously you got way more pressure in the back and they're at maximum like 50, 51 when they're cold, which I highly recommend you do. You gotta do that when you're towing, really. You, you truly have to do that, so don't forget the tire pressures. Okay, I'm so happy we're almost done. All right, we're not stopping at that one, Fredericksburg. We're stopping at the one in Woodbridge. It's right here. Oh, look at that. Not many people are using it. It's at a mall. I, I don't expect it to stay like that. But it is, I think, 76 miles, 74 miles. So 74 miles times two plus 40 is 188 by my calculations. So we need 188 miles and that's driving slow back to the old way, 45 to 55 miles an hour. This is the one I have to stop at the one in Fredericksburg. If I knew, if I didn't think it was gonna be difficult in Fredericksburg, I would just go there. And But I'm gonna have to unhook again. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be worth it. And I might have to wait, who knows. So, that's what I need. Need another 100 miles. Need at least 188, maybe 100, maybe I'll put 190 on. And, but I gotta go slow, but otherwise it means waiting for that last thing to top off, which takes forever. And you gotta kinda calculate the cost-benefit analysis 
of waiting forever to charge the top off versus going a little faster. And I think that that's it. 180, 190, I'm not doing any more than that. Otherwise, it's a net loss in terms of time, I think. That's my belief. Yeah, when we're at 94 kilowatts, it really seems like we're making progress. And if you guys aren't familiar, that's that's how you tell how fast you're going to be charging. It's based on how many kilowatts are going into your car. And only Tesla superchargers really have, have consistent charging networks that are capable of that kind of stuff. Nobody else does. Any of the other types of chargers limit you to like 24 kilowatts, something like that. Ridiculously low. But at least we're still in it now, and we're getting close to 190. All right, I can't wait any longer. This is painfully slow. Once you drop below 100 miles an hour, like right now, it's like a torture test. We're just we're hitting the road right now. Almost forgot to mention, each time you connect and disconnect, you gotta check your lights. So, are they working? You can see that marker light. Yes, it is working, thankfully. Well, there's all kinds of traffic here on the interstate. Let's look at my bright side. It should help me with my range, right? I'm not gonna get back any sooner, but it will help me with my range. And I'm kind of curious to see how the traffic aware cruise control works, if it's kind of like autopilot in the traffic here. Look at all those cars. Oh my gosh. All right, let's set it. It's set to 65. I don't, we cannot do that. We can't do 65. I'm not even sure if we can do 50. I just set it at 49. Let's do 48. Let's leave it there. Okay, right now projected 107, but I was going real slow on the back roads. We gotta let this set in for a little bit now that I'm on the highway. You see that big spike of me getting up to speed? And give it a few miles and I'll check back in. All right, well, I've only had to drive 65 miles. It says I have a projected range of 116, so I'm gonna step it up. I'm, I'm going 48 already, but I don't know. Let's see, how, let's see how it goes. I guess no climate control again makes a difference. All right, now this way has some hills. As you can see, we just came down one. Now we're going up. It's gonna be interesting to see how this goes in terms of range and uh, electric usage. See, we're definitely climbing now, look at that. And there's gonna be quite a few of these. So even though I'm ahead right now, way ahead, let's, uh, I think maybe I better give it some time. It, just as much as that spike down, it's spiking up now. There it goes. They were still climbing. All right, it's proving very difficult, look at this, to um, figure out what's going on with the range and usage with these hills. And my own guesstimate is that these hills are taking out much more on the uphill than they're giving back on the downhill. That could just be me. So I, my own feeling is I think that when we hit hills, it's gonna be, even with the, if you got uphill and downhill equal, it's gonna be a lower overall drivable range for the same amount of electricity. That's what I think. Maybe I'm wrong about these hills being a negative. Maybe it's a positive. If it's, up, it's equal up and down. Maybe I put too much juice in, but I mean, we're going 56 miles an hour now. This is not typical as, you, as you've known. I mean, I don't have the climate control on, but still, we got all these hills now. We didn't have these hills in the past. We know that. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening now. I tell you, I am baffled by this. I just double checked my math. I did it right, the same way we've been doing the calculations. I mean, unless the breakaway switch on the trailer has been malfunctioning and it's been had the brakes on all the time and now they're released. I mean, that's one potential thing, although I don't think so. I, don't, I, I never notice any difference pulling away when we rehook. It could just be that these up and down hills are a net positive for towing heavy loads, which I would not have thought. And I've never towed really heavy loads. I've only towed very light loads. 
and it doesn't seem like it seemed like the hills were were a negative, a net negative on towing light loads. But heavy loads maybe is different because we're still only averaging yeah 568 watt hours per mile at 58 miles per hour. So, I mean, we're below 600. We're below where we need to be in terms of watt hours per mile. So I did the calculations right. We're just using less watt hours per mile. This is this is the least amount of watt hours per mile ever, and I've I've got the climate off. I don't need it right now. But it still still shouldn't make that much difference. Well, this will make me a little more confident going into the mountains if this is truly the case with with hills. Because we uh, we do a festival up in New England in the summertime, and there's some of that, definitely. So yeah, it's boosted us up to 60 miles an hour now, using the same formula we've used. There's the old style towing right there. All right, the fun's over. We're hitting some heavy traffic now. I think a lot of people are actually getting off the road here. Where's my focus? Yeah, lots of people are getting off the road. My GPS is telling me to go straight. I wonder if their GPS is... This is a new thing. That since everyone uses GPS, now they just follow whatever the computer says. And maybe it's better this way. Maybe not. But look at that traffic jam. Oh, man. I hope I'm making the right decision here. Because as you can tell by looking at this, we're about to hit some red. There's the red. See it? We're about to hit it. Sure enough, the traffic is finally here. And that's a really dark color red. It does look bad. I say that overall we've done really well with missing traffic on this trip until now, and this may ruin my dinner with Denise. Oh man. All right, I'm testing out the traffic aware cruise control now, seeing how it responds. I'm not doing this, this is the cruise control. No, this is an integrated part of autopilot. So it stopped the vehicle on its own too. And we remain completely stopped, this is not good. Not good at all. Well, we're starting to move again. You know, the wheel, it's not gonna steer for me, but it, you can see how, I'm trying to, yeah, I feel a little shudder when it lets off the accelerator all of a sudden. But this is in tow mode. It knows I've got a heavy load back there. As I mentioned before, early in the video, it won't even let me out of tow mode right now. It is so certain that there's a heavy trailer back there. Look at all those cars, oh my gosh. As far as you can see is cars. So far this is working well. Just have to steer and it's doing all the work for me. It's not stopping short or anything, which is good because as you know I don't have a, the electric brakes hooked up, but it does respond really well to the weight back there and the regenerative braking. Maybe that's why it does so well with the heavy load on hills. It really soaks up that energy, that momentum. I'll tell you, when the people in front of me speed up, this thing really lurches forward. It just lurches forward. Like, you have no idea there's a trailer back there. Let's see if we're going to get to the spot here where it's going to lurch forward again. I mean, I wouldn't accelerate that hard on my own. Let's see. we got to move. A lurch forward. Uh, we're not going to lurch right now. At least we're moving. Okay, now it's hesitating. Is it going to... I guess they're not, they're not really lurching forward. One of these times, hopefully I'll get it for you. There's that big gap behind me. Where the trailer is. Whoops, I'm turning the wheel. I have to steer still. That's me. Turning the wheel. 
Take a look at that exhaust on that truck, straight out the back. And it is a diesel. Look at that. I wonder if all kinds of black smoke comes out of there because they use off-road diesel. And they're supposed to use on-road diesel. That's why I see this black smoke is because it's illegal fuel usually. Sorry, my camera just suddenly stopped wanting to focus. I had to stop and relaunch the app. Just as I noted before, it's so quiet. Oh, and that truck is not spewing out black smoke. I guess they are using on-road diesel. That's good. As you can see, I switched lanes, and the system is doing great. It's traffic aware cruise control, doing a great job, making it a lot easier. Whoa, we lurch forward like that. See that? Hey, we are starting to move again. Could this be a trend? Yeah, I just checked the traffic on Google Maps and it is, I think it's lighting up. They must have cleared up whatever accident it was. It must have been an accident. As we get back up to speed, the Traffic Aware Cruise Control is doing a nice job of accelerating and braking. It, I mean, I, I initially I thought it was too aggressive, but it's just doing a really good job and it knows the trailer is back there So I guess that's all programmed into the software. It's never really having the jab on the brakes Like I mentioned, it's just getting into the regen really thick into the regen at times But I, I don't I see the pedals not moving down there So it's not braking until the very end when we stop I don't know if you notice that, but, but uh, you can always the brake actually gets pushed down if it uh, is actually braking the pedal yeah, see, some people are still getting off here. Initially, was telling people to detour up here too. One of my, I turned on Waze and told me that, but I'm like, oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, we're we're definitely moving. We hit the worst of it already, and just a matter of getting through the remaining leftover. Well, now it got in the brake. You heard that brake there. It did get in the brake pedal there. So I spoke too soon. This is Fredericksburg Route 1. This is right near where the other charger is. And actually, now that I look at it, it might have been a good idea to go there, but maybe not. Who knows? Maybe that station is loaded up with traffic, people getting off the road. Maybe I made a wise decision. Who knows? You never know with these things. You can see right there where it's yellow. That used to be red, the whole thing. It is definitely letting up, thankfully. back in a little bit of traffic again we really got up to speed it's doing great and again I got the I got the HVAC on now I'm I'm really get my right foot into it and we're st I'm still I cannot believe how low the electricity usage is right now with these rolling hills I can't believe it well as you can see I am really booking and we got 14 miles to go and a projected 40 miles of range which means 20 plus 4 we only need 34 to make it. I got the climate control on. I'm going fast. And I, I think the main difference is the rolling hills. I still, I can't draw a conclusion yet, but that's got to be it. When we go down, all that mass, like right now it's creating all this momentum. It's pushing us forward. And on the slow, steady downhills, I guess it doesn't build up that kind of momentum like it's building up now. I guess it must have, it must have tremendous momentum coming down this hill. That's got to be it. And I guess that makes a difference. And my foot is barely on the accelerator right now. 
we got the uphill. See, after this long downhill, we've got the uphill. But apparently it doesn't make that much of a difference. Or it makes a positive difference, you know? Look at those hills, and keep in mind, we're going fast, okay? Only 616 watt hours per mile. Okay, we're heading down another hill. They're everywhere, and then we're going up the next one. All right, we're almost at a supercharger with way more energy than we need. So surprising for this trip. If you've been watching up to this point, you know what I'm talking about. So let's just hope I can get a spot here without having to unhook. That would be really nice. Well, based on two out of 10, I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, here's the mall and yeah, oh man, it's near full over there on the right. All right, we are charging now. And the screen's not coming up, sometimes that happens. There we go. We got 80 kilowatts, okay. Could be worse. Oh, and it's high limit supercharger. We can fix that though. From either your app or the car. You just go set limit, see how, and then done. Because I have to get the full thing. All right, we're here for an hour. 3.30, 4.30. We can do dinner. Yes, we can do dinner, oh my gosh. I can't wait to get a shower. Don't tell anyone, but I haven't showered this whole time. Oh my gosh. All right, you can see it's totally just about full. We have to double up. We are doubled up, and there's a door. I had to lock it. And I really gotta go to the bathroom really bad. See, there's, there's two spots over there, but they are already on the same, uh, they're, they're on different circuits. Everybody else would be doubled up. Everyone's doubled up at this charger. It's just at the mall, so that's what happens. Everyone goes to the mall. And here's the mall right here. I'm going over to Nordstrom Rack to use the bathroom. See, there's everybody there and my trailer in the background. Well, I've been checking the app. I'm not getting full rate of charge. I'm only getting 66 kilowatts. That's all I've been getting because that Model X next to me is on the same numbered circuit. I'm almost certain of it. I thought maybe the Model 3 was, but I forgot that the Model X 2X is over. is not charging at all. It's just parked there. So since that Model 3 pulled out, it's on the circuit over. Usually the ones that are right next to each other have the same number and they're on the same circuit. That's how you tell. If it has the same number, just uh, word to the wise here because when you're, especially when you're towing, you really want to get this thing charged as fast as you can. And everything was doubled up, but now this person left on the end, so it would have been best if I went to that one over there, but that was further away from my trailer. I didn't want to do that, and you never know. You never know who's going to leave first. So I'm still doubled up, but no sense switching now. We're almost through the fastest part of the charge phase uh, in the first half of the battery anyway. You can see that's my max because I'm doubled up with this Model X over here. Both hooked up to the same circuit. And it only has a maximum of so many kilowatts per circuit. It has to split between the two and you can't have two charging at maximum rate simultaneously. It's lower than that. Actually, I was wrong. That's 1A, this is 2A. 3A, 4A, so actually I'm hooked up with somebody doubled up on 2B and it's probably someone down there a little further. But you just gotta watch these numbers, that's how you know you don't wanna be on the same number. The letters just signify how many are on each circuit, but the number is what you don't wanna match up with. Oh and look, that X next to me must be just about ready to finish. Look, it's ramping up, it's up to 76 kilowatts now. So again, you don't need to move because especially if that car's been there a lot longer than you, they're just gonna slow down and you're gonna speed up, which is what's happening. They're slowing down and I'm picking up the kilowatts. I think it might be like 150 kilowatts maximum, so that one might be at 75 right now too. And they're probably tapering, oh, look at that, it's went backwards. Oh, that's no good. Why'd that happen? 
Huh. All right, I just got some work done on the computer. I think we're just about done here. I have more than enough to get back, way more. I only have like 30, what is it? 34 miles to go, and I'll have plenty after for taking my trailer other places, which I will have to. So we gotta go unlock it. And it's back to almost full again, but at one point, just a few minutes ago, 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, it was, uh, I was only me and one other person charging, which was amazing. It just shows you the importance of timing. It's kind of like finding a parking spot in the city when you go downtown. It's like, there's gotta be some parking god or something helping you out with that. Supercharging god. You just, it's, it's not necessarily luck and you can't predict it. All right. Oops. We got to put it in drive. Not a Tesla. Oh, almost went too far. It might have. I think that's good now. Hopefully that works. We're back on I-95 for just a few minutes and then it's secondary roads for the remainder of the trip. Almost there, just 31 miles to go. We made that one, right? Oh, we're not gonna make this one. No range meter, just enjoying the drive. Like I haven't been able to. I feel like I've been on edge the whole drive. So, if you want to know what long distance trailering is with electricity, with Tesla, and actually Tesla is the best company to do it. You can't even do it with almost any other company. I don't think at all. It's just a little stressful right now. No problem, it's a challenge. If you're up for the challenge, do it. Like, let's go through, pick up some speed. Woo, so much power still, my gosh. All these people also, when I'm, when I'm pulling away from traffic lights here on the secondary roads, they're just assuming that I'm going to go slow. I can tell by the, their driving behavior. And then I'll just give it a little extra push. Not even floor. I don't, I don't even know what it's like to floor this thing with the trailer. I don't, I'm afraid something's going to snap in half on the drive shaft because it's got so much torque out of the motors. You know, um, I just don't want to do it. No, and, or my cargo is going to go all over the place in the trailer. You know, there's just so much power. That's why I was saying earlier in the video, maybe a good thing is going to be to limit the power in tow mode. Just limit it. And most of this is regen. I let off the brake. I touched the brake for a minute there. I let off of it now. Now I'm gonna touch it again, just a little bit. That's why I say I don't think I need a brake controller. And I don't think I'm gonna hook it up. Just can't really drive super aggressively. I, I really shouldn't be driving even this aggressively with a trailer. So, you know, so much has been learned. Thanks so much for watching this video. There's so many lessons to be learned if you scan back through here. If you're interested in any towing, if you've done towing, let me know in the comments below. You know, uh, if you have a friend who's into different aspects of towing, you know, uh, you can put different time marks on this video and in the comments and, and the kind of stuff that you're interested in. I can do more videos on those types of things. This is not the, a one and done. I mean, I am going to be doing this long distance stuff on a somewhat regular basis and regular towing on a almost continual basis when we get into the cold months here. So thanks so much for watching this. This is, uh, you know, you've gotten this far. I don't even know how long this video is right now, but if you've gotten this far, I'm sure you have been with me for a long time. So thank you. I'm noticing that even if I'm pushing it here, like, look, I'm at 700 watt hours. I could go more. I, I'm just, 
trying to hold myself back. It's um, the cooler temperatures here make a big difference in the strain on the battery and the whoa, look at that, man, and the the way that the uh, the amount of, of cooling off that the battery pack needs just from towing this load. It doesn't seem to struggle at all in this 71 degree weather, not at all, and it's less a lot less humid too. So I'm sure that's a factor as well. Tell you, I really appreciate the regenerative braking. The one-footed, you can still do one-footed driving even with towing. It's amazing. And the power, like I said, it's amazing power. The only thing is the range anxiety, you know, and that can be when Tesla keeps building their moat of chargers, build more and more and build drive-through, that'll be solved. The vehicle itself is great. You know, it's just that it's got to be able to charge more quickly at more locations. That's That's the bottom line. And this is, I'd say, this is the best vehicle I've ever towed with. And I've towed with a number of vehicles uh, that were, I would think, good towing vehicles. I've had a Tundra V8. Uh, I got a new Tacoma V6, which is pretty much equivalent to the old Tundra V8. But this thing is just the best towing vehicle, for sure. It's just that because electricity is new, it's got a few shortcomings. You can hear that trailer ball creaking. i got to grease it up a little bit. I can really hear that trailer ball. What was your favorite part of the video? Comment below. Tell me the favorite part of the video. Whatever happened. So many things happened. Oh my gosh. Just over the last three days. I guess normally this trip takes a little over a day. And now it takes over two days. This is like the third? Yeah, over two days. Two plus days. It used to be um, like mine, just under one day. Now it's two plus doubled or almost tripled depending upon how you do this and um, so much depends oh the trailer ball too the reason why I hear it I'm used to driving with pickup trucks towing with them you won't hear a, gre a trailer ball needs grease in a pickup truck because it's in a totally separate area outside that's not connected to the inside of the vehicle and in this case SUV it's literally right behind me and the inside of the vehicle goes right up to where that trailer ball is and we got a few raindrops on the windshield just in time to end this video. Back in Reston, Virginia. You can tell by all the construction. Metro, Reston Town Center. Well, thanks so much again for watching. Very thankful that you made it all the way through this video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs up and the bell for notifications. And we'll see you in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot to mention I made it back for dinner. Or eating a real meal, right? <laughs> yeah. I got some tamale pie, and then Denise got hummus. Full wrap. Yeah.